Who is Jean Varda? Who is? Who? That artist. Tell me. He was an artist. A collagist. And he was Varda. He, he came from Greece. Oh, he was, he was Greek to a fault. And it's rumored, rumored he was a descendant of the French artist Jacques-Louis David. What was his art? Who? Who were his influences? What was his art like? His style. His style? Picasso Abraham. An artist break it down into different facets. Break down a human face or a still life. Seeing it from many different sides at the same side at the same side at the same time. Seen seen from different aspects. Where did he live? Where did he live? Born in Greece. 1893. Moved to Paris. 1912 Cubist. Like many artists, Sparta left Europe before World War II. He took a boat to America, landed in New York, and then drove out west. Varda had the ferry boat. Did you know him? But I've known him. I've been on his boat. Women, Women in the sea. Varda is best known for his lifestyle rather than his artwork. He lived on a houseboat. Ferry. Byzantine. Jean Varda. Magic. In the moment. He knew everybody. Picasso et Baroque. Permissive. The magnet. Lifestyle. One of the most underrated artists. Sausalito. Waterfront. A bright yellow tie and a chartreuse shirt. Of infectious, <laughs> most wonderful parties of all. Enthusiastic. Party. Oh, you never knew who you were going to meet. Colors. Streaming hit of white hair. Lots of young girls. Promoted freedom. Jesse. I was working on the um, Cythera. Uh, of artist specifications were that it be accommodating enough for a grand piano and five dancers. Varda had gone out for uh, shopping for stuff for lunch for us. Uh, when Varda came back, he was very, very impatient because we hadn't done uh, enough work and took the two by four, grabbed an ads, stood on it, and hacked away the part that didn't look like a boat. And I said to Varda, I said, Look at all those ads marks, Varda. The hand of man must show. Boat it together. Let's have lunch. But what about his art? What about his paintings and collages? What about his art? He was an artist, right? Well, we're in Pyro, New Zealand. I acquired this painting through a valuation day that we did in the Ilk of Antiques Roadshow in the town here. As to the significance of it, pass. I've lived with this painting for 40 years, maybe, maybe more, maybe 45 years. And not once have I ever noticed that it was actually, um, it was actually wash, wash over newspaper. I have no idea what exactly the year he did it, but it was no doubt probably something he did in the 40s. Could have been even the 30s, and Varda just had it around. It's some sort of sign or ad cut out from the newspaper, maybe? It probably was an ad. You know, he gave us another hint. It says Roosevelt. One year we had put up uh, this gorgeous art festival. We showed Varda this, expecting him to give us nothing but praise. He was furious. He says, look at all of that red. Look at all of those yellows. Look at all that green. How can these poor artists exhibit in this color? You've, given, you've taken all of their colors away from them. You must use colors very, very selectively. The color and the form of the great dramas, that is the paramount thing. But you see, there are no beautiful forms by themselves. A beautiful form arises only by a relationship. So people who make, let's say, squares, superimposed, can make the most beautiful thing, just about square. Well, in nature, everything, you see, interpenetrates each other. I look at you, but uh, the, the background has not stopped behind you. So I have to reconstitute that through my painting. The first time I heard about Bada was from the letter of Henry wrote me in New York. Jean Varda seems to have divined your whole being. I know very well the collage he sent you because I slept with that collage several weeks. I take the liberty to send you a collage. It's called Women Reconstructing the World. Father had this obsession with clothes, with little pieces of textile that he used in his collages. So one day I arrived and he walked up to me and he looked at the lining of my coat in an obsessional way and said, oh, I would love to have a little piece of that. And 
I really did say yes right away. For a woman to cut the lining of a coat takes a little hesitation. I did. I slashed right through it and sent him the piece. Barbara, uh, as an interior designer, had lots of samples of curtain material, of uh, upholstery material, and all of that, and uh, that's what he used for the collages. He said, I am religious. Uh, and they say, boy, what do you mean you're religious? You never go to church. You do not have to go to church to be religious. You have to convert things. So you can, I convert used bad samples of bad fabric into beautiful paintings. Is that not a religious experience? And my child has not enough milk to live, paint. Or go to the North Pole. Or, uh, or convert the cannibals to Christianity. Or, or play the violin. Or spend a night in a cold room under a smoky lamp. And you make one line so perfect. You work like a beaver the whole night, refusing all the comforts of life. In order that this line will be like a ship that will cross to the furthest shores of time. This man is not free. He cannot choose. He's like a murderer. He's like a... It's, it's marvelous, 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 marvelous. 